So people, I am back with another Outriders video and today is the day people we finally get the patch which buffs many classes and dead skills. Today we get into it all. How's it going people? My name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Okay so at the time of me making this video it's uh, 8 p.m. UK time. There is a Xbox problem with a patch. I don't think here you're able to download it as of right now, but by the time you've watched this video, it's probably going to be sorted. So we'll skip that um, and get straight into the patch notes and what this patch does in terms of buffing our classes. Okay, so patch notes. Crash fixes. Improve multiplayer so that rubber banding and packet loss should now be reduced for players under 350 ms. The anti-duplication system will no longer take your equipped items into account when checking whether to re-roll a dropped duplicate. Nice. Fixed an issue that could cause the Pyromancer's thermal bomb to lose all charges and enter full cooldown if a player was interrupted while casting the skill. Improve the targeting of the Trickster's Venator's knife so that it should now more consistently target a player's intended enemy. Fix the issue that could cause the Trickster's Hunter Prey to not turn the player towards an enemy's back if aiming down sights immediately after activation. Fix the Technomancer's Borealis Monarch set so that it will now correctly grant a 90% damage increase to any frozen targets. Note, the set bonus should apply to all frozen targets no matter how they've been frozen. So whether you use skills to freeze them on the Technomancer, whether you use weapons to freeze them, they should all receive that damage when you have that three piece Borealis set on your Technomancer. Resolved an issue with the Devastator statue set and changed its description to match its behaviour. The new description is, well, either Tremor or Golem is active, increase firepower by 100% and weapon life leech by 100% for you and your teammates. The old description you can see on screen now. The old functionality meant that the statue set bonus could end after 8 seconds. Reworking this set means that the bonus can now be maintained for longer. Okay, so fix an issue that could cause low damage threshold mods to trigger immediately after death or after respawning. Fix an issue whereby players who are level 50 could appear as a level 1 in a party. Note that this issue may still be visible when in lobbies. Fix some out of sync subtitles. Okay, so on to the buffs, people. Okay, so starting with the Pyro Millimancer. Feed the flames. The ammo replenished by the bullet absorption mod has been increased to 40%. It was previously 33%. Volcanic rounds. The resistance debuff provided by the susceptibility mod has been increased to 50%. Previously 34%. The reload boost and lava shots mods have had their perks swapped. Reload boost will now increase anomaly power and its previously firepower, and lava shots will do the direct opposite. Ash blast. Ash Blast has had its base skill cooldown reduced by 4 seconds from 27.5 to 23.5 seconds. The buff duration of Death Sentence mod has been increased by 3 seconds from 5 to 8 seconds. On to my baby the Trickster. Barrel Time. Reduced cooldown of Barrel Time by 5.5 seconds from 13.5 to 8 seconds. Not bad at all. Slow Trap. The cooldown of Slow Trap has been reduced by 9.7 seconds. From 30.7 seconds to 21 seconds. I mean, 30.7 seconds is a tad high. It's a tad on that high side, people. So, yes, that definitely needs to be reduced. Time Rift. The cooldown of the time rift has been reduced by 3.4 seconds from 15.4 to 12 seconds. Increase the DLT damage of the A Little Bit of Pain mod by 71% from base of a 0.35 AP to a 0.6 AP, AP meaning anomaly power. Condense the DLT duration of the a little bit of pain mod to 6 seconds, it was previously 10. Nice. Increase the armor and resistance debuff provided by the time clock mod to 35%, it was previously 25%. Increase the weapon cleave damage provided by the pain transfer mod to 20% weapon damage, previously it was 10% weapon damage. Okay, so on to the Techno Millimancer. 
pain launcher. Reduce the base cooldown of pain launcher by 10 seconds, from 40 seconds to 30 seconds. Shrapnel. Reduce the base cooldown of shrapnel by 5 seconds, from 22 to 17 seconds. Increase the base damage of shrapnel by 19%, from base of a 0.756 AP to a 0.9 AP. Then we have Coil Turret. The Hail Shot mod has had its FPS set to 1.5, it was previously 1. FPS controls how much the mod benefits from the status power attribute. This change effectively means that the damage increase provided by Hail Shot will increase by 50%, though the effectiveness of this improvement still depends on the character's status power attribute. Okay, then we have Devastator, Boulder Dash. Using the skill will now provide a significant damage reduction during its animation. 65%. Players can now press trigger again to use an air of effect attack during a run animation. Nice. Endless Mass. Enemies affected by Endless Mass can now be damaged and killed during the animation. Change the Wide Horizons mod so that on top of the range increase, the mod will allow Endless Mass to ignore the enemy skill, absorbing skin. Used by Alpha, Peferials and Brood Mothers. And Reflect Bullets. Ending the skill early will now refund part of the cooldown, up to 90%, no bad at all, and also gain universal buffs. Okay, so armor mod buffs. Personal Space will have its damage bonus increased from 15 to 25%. Crit Stack will have its anomaly power boost increased by 21%, from a base of a 5.79 to a 7. Stand Tool will have its base fire power bonus increased by 20% and its base anomaly power by 16%. From base 10 firepower to a 15 anomaly power to a 12 firepower and a 17.5 anomaly power. Perseverance Shield will have its base shield value increased by 40% from 25 to 30. Nice. This patch will also fix a bug whereby Perseverance Shield could trigger and grant shield after death. Blazing Aegis will have the armor increase, it grants increase by 21%, from a base of a 46.35 to a 56. Plate Dodger will have its armor value grant increased by 12%, from a base of 58 to a 65, and its duration increase from 5 seconds to 7 seconds. And then we have Weapon Mod Buffs PayPal. Anomaly Enhancement will have its coal efficiency increased from 30% Anomaly Power to 40%, and Bone Shrapnel will have its damage increase by 5%, from a base 56.7 to a 59.85. That could be quite good. PayPal. And there on screen now we can see an ongoing list of currently tracked issues, which I won't read through them all because there's quite a few here and we've actually been through these quite a few times. But yes guys, that one big patch we've been waiting for for a long, long while is now here. Now although a lot of these buffs are pretty good, I don't think it's going to get a lot of people back playing the game. But what it does mean is the game is in a much, much better state now and they have said uh, in the past that as soon as the game is in that perfect state, they may just think about dropping information on new content, which is what I'm most hyped for. But we will see, guys. We will see. But there we have it. All the details on the latest patch and what it offers for Outriders. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. And hopefully, I will see you on that next one.